welcome to the verse by verse study of the book of Proverbs. We shall finish chapter 16 today. Five of the first six verses we'll look at today reference a king. The author is teaching us about how a leader should exercise his or her authority. Whether you are a parent or a president, there is a godly way to administer authority. Let's take a look, beginning in verse 10. The lips of a king speak as an oracle, meaning speaks with authority, and his mouth does not betray justice. God's wisdom says that just because someone has or is in charge, has authority, does not give them the right to judge or behave unfairly. Justice means no favoritism, equal treatment for everyone. It also means that a complete honesty is required, as noted in the next verse 11. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are his making. As we discussed in Proverbs chapter 11, dishonesty pollutes a person and an organization. The example here is referring to a dishonest merchant who would use altered scale weights in order to cheat their customers. Next, kings detest wrongdoing for a throne, a throne meaning here a family or a business or a kingdom. A throne is established, is built through righteousness as opposed to dishonesty. And in verse 13, kings, meaning godly kings, take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. A wise, godly leader will reject any kind of corruption or dishonesty in themselves or their subordinates. And instead, she or he will model and encourage righteousness, including speaking the truth even when it's not popular, which is the point of the next verse 14. A king's wrath, meaning his or her rejection, is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. Again, we have a wise leader will reject unrighteousness because it undermines the core values of the organization. The point of the verse is that his or her wrath or displeasure should be reserved only for those that are, quote, dishonest, that are corrupt, and they're speaking falsehood. And it's not reserved for those that speak the truth, even if that truth is bad news. It's not the job of the leader. There's no right as a leader to be able to shoot an honest messenger. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. This is a general statement. When the boss is happy and is doing the right things, everyone is happy. Just as in a family, when folks are happy and positive and modeling God's caring values, that's a major positive impact on that family, on the morale of that family or that organization. Next, how much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver? The two key words is to get, the repeated to get, to seek and to obtain. What are you and I truly chasing in life? What are we trying to get? Getting God's wisdom will bring far more joy, peace, security, contentment than material wealth. The highway, the path of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserves their lives. Choosing God's wisdom to guide our path avoids many of the potholes of life. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. This is a godly guarantee that I have personally found to be true in life. Prideful decisions do not end well. Pride blinds us. As a result, we are walking in darkness and will invariably stumble. And the bigger the pride, the more painful the fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder, implying dishonesty, with the proud. Choosing to associate with the arrogant, the prideful, the dishonest, 
but are the in crowd may appear to be the better course, the better path. But God's promising that the much better course is choosing the humble, the honest crowd, perhaps not the in crowd, but that is the crowd God will bless. And that's the message of the next verse. Whoever, whoever gives heed, chooses to follow to instructions. He gives heed to instructions, meaning God's wisdom prospers. They will prosper. And blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Again, we have a godly guarantee. Following and trusting in God will be blessed, period. The wise in heart are called discerning, and gracious words promote instruction. God's wisdom gives us a beautiful blessing, discernment, meaning insight. Wisdom is more than just recognizing right from wrong. It is also knowing, as the theologian Spurgeon said, is recognizing right from almost right. Having discernment means that we also have the capacity to speak God's gracious words that will be a blessing to others, as we shall see in later verse 24. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. Prudence means the application of wisdom, and it will yield a fountain of life, meaning a fountain of blessings. While the opposite is true, rejecting God and God's wisdom is folly, and it only brings strife. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent and their lips promote instruction. A characteristic of God's wisdom is a prudent mouth. It is a person that speaks few words, but when they do speak, people listen because their words are truth, valuable, insightful, helpful, and that person is walking what they're talking. Gracious words are a honeycomb sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Gracious words are wise, godly words, full of kindness and wisdom, words that bring both emotional and spiritual nourishment to others' soul and to their body. There is a way that appears, appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. And the key word here is appears. Without God's discernment, many and often any path appears to be right, but in the end it proves to be very much the wrong path. The appetite for labors work for them. Their hunger drives them on. The author is making a general statement about human nature. Physical hunger is a powerful motivator. And you and I should have the same kind of motivation, the same kind of hunger for God's wisdom. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. To plot means someone is setting a trap to do harm. This is a warning that we're to be discerning about the words that we hear from others, because they can be used to manipulate and to burn us. A similar warning in verse 28. A perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. Here, words from a perverse heart can create conflict and gossip can destroy both a reputation and a relationship. A violent or unrighteous person entices their neighbor and leads them, their neighbor, down a path that is not good, not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their, purses their lips is bent on evil. Again, a warning. Beware of the enticing, manipulative words from the lips of the unrighteous and the flirtatious or flattering wink that they often use. They can lead us down a path that is not good. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. 
it is attained in the way of righteousness. Gray hair is, means or implies someone is mature in God's wisdom, that has practiced his wisdom of righteousness over a period of time. Another warning. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. Impatience or lack of prudence may yield temporarily a great reward, a great victory. But in the long run, wisdom is saying prudence will yield far greater blessings. And the last verse for today, the lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Living a life outside of God's wisdom is living a life of chance. You are deciding your life by casting die in your or dice in your lap. But in the end, God is sovereign. His promises, his plans will be fulfilled. No matter what path the dice reveals, a life apart from God, sadly, will not bring God's blessings of peace, joy, and fulfillment. Well, that ends today's chapter. Next chapter will be 17 next week. And until then, may God bless you and your family with both grace and peace. Aloha.